Well, what this is all about is saying, what happens if we think of the patient first, or at the beginning of everything that we do? Putting the person in charge, giving them the power. The NHS has become more and more specialised. Our, our, our country breaks down the problem of health into lots of different specialisms that treat people. And when the, the people we were trying to serve within um, a scribe used to be in district general hospitals where everything was done in the same place, they were now going on a place where there are lots of different uh, legal entities with their own way of handling data. And that became the fact that the data wasn't available at the point of care and it was stopped by data sharing agreements and particularly GDPR on its way. And that started the idea of, of saying, well, could we do this completely differently? Could we co be completely centric in the way that health IT is done? Is it possible to mean that the person can arrive at, in front of every clinician with their health record in their hand, knowing that they've got a complete record and they can be, they can be safe? And the clinicians can actually work knowing that they've got all the information they need. And so this simple premise of, of putting the patient first decided to apply that. And what we, what we basically said was, if the person themselves can own the data and be their data controller legally, that means that they can share the data with whichever organisation they go to. So all they need to do is be given the permission to own it and let the organisation share that data with them. What happens if we think of it differently? And we say the person's in the middle. So the personal health record starts to be created by sufficient that wherever you turn up, you have your ID. And then on top of that, you start entering your own personally entered data. So, so that might be scans of the documents you've received through the post. It might be blood pressure readings from your home blood pressure monitor. Um, it may um, simply be the drugs you're taking to, remind, to be reminded to take them. So we started off in Evergreen saying, we'll build one of those. What we'll do is we'll make it so that you can manually enter people with things and you can put all of your IDs in. We've now got a full data record for the person which contains the ID. This has the capability of being connected to anywhere that you go, internationally, globally. It doesn't matter whether you went from one hospital to another um, and they don't know about you. You've got the record with you. We certainly believe, having done many of these difficult projects in the NHS to integrate things, that by doing it that way and putting the patient first, it actually delivers exactly what we need in healthcare, which is to ha be able to travel between all the different specialisms where the data is mapped to the current system uh, and available. So how far have we got? Well, generally, I would argue the NHS and health systems globally tend to engage once you're sick, because that's at the point when you can start to provide value. It's a, start to, it's a starting point that drug companies can commercialise things, but not many people look at what you would do to stop being sick. So if you look at the problem we have today, going beyond the data, how is healthcare today? You could say it's very simple. You know, we get born, we then get sick, and then we die. There's a new term being banded around called health span as well as lifespan. It's in the five year forward view, um, and it's uh, mentioned there as being that we have 18 years from getting our first long term disease and dying when we do it at eight, 82. So at 64, on average, most of us will have something that's being treated. How can we help people not get sick? How can we reduce the demand? That doesn't mean to say we need to do something to help people when they are, but if we could reduce those numbers, we might be able to com com cope with the demand. So something about it is to do with DNA, um, in that we can predict those things that you should focus on individually to mean that you will have a long life, and we can do that today. Evergreen does have a... A, um, a DNA test that attempts to do that. So we can predict things like your likelihood of being short of a vitamin. We can predict um, what your carbohydrate metabolism is. Do you really have to worry particularly about getting type 2 diabetes or you're, or you're not really what one of those people? We can predict your fat metab metabolisms. We can also start to pick up signs that you might become diagnosably ill later. 
to question are they symptoms or are they in, um, wellness indicators. We're, we're challenged within Evergreen to know what they are, but they are little things that happen that, that start to tell us that we're not quite right, that we could actually pick up on that generally healthcare doesn't today. In changing the way that we look at things within Evergreen, we're starting to get just the first glimmers of data out of some test users as we are hoping to score wellness, to help people understand how they can increase their health span. So what we're doing at the moment is we're building a data model to mean that we can look at every aspect in those personally owned health records where people have um, embraced the concept of being a data donor on our app and, and trying to build models for organisations like this to do some research on. And we're proving that that's possible. So that's what this is about. So what we're about to do is, is bring out the whole concept of having a, a well-being score. We're building a data model that will mean you will know whether you're well or not. And attached to that are intelligently produced pieces of information that can help you understand what you might do in that circumstance. As you start to drill into it, maybe you drill into your diet. You can see there are other things you could do, other questionnaires you could complete, or maybe other initiatives you should take. And again, you get the overall wellness score in that area. I believe we should all allow people and help people to own their own data. It doesn't mean it belongs to us as a company, it means it belongs to them and allow them to transact with it, both to improve healthcare as data donors and also to enjoy the healthcare that they need when they see another healthcare professional. So thank you very much for your time.